you guys how to use the NTBI BLAST tool to explore some phylogenetic relationships among animals. So we'll start off by going to the NTBI website and looking for some genes. So I'm going to type in homeobox gene. I'm going to look in maybe in the nucleotide sequence area and Sorry, we'll do that again, homeobox gene. And a homeobox sequence is the core sequence that binds to DNA inside the Hox genes. So then I scroll down, looking at the different um, hits I got for this sequence. And you might notice in Homo sapiens chromosome here, this is an entire chromosome sequence. It's 133 million base pairs long. It's way too long to think about blasting. In fact, if you blasted a sequence that long, it would probably just reject it at some point. So what we want are some smaller bits. So here's a mouse gene with uh, 1,500 base pairs, and that's kind of interesting. Although, you know, mice are pretty high in the, uh, you know, if you were looking at the phylogeny of animals, it's pretty far along, you know, it's up at the upper end of the chordate part. And if we want to explore the origins of animals, we want to look some, at something a little more close to the base of the phylogenetic tree, if you will. So here's some Strongylus and Trotus purpuratus. These are the purple sea urchins that you guys have been seeing in the inner title. So that might be a good choice. And I kind of scroll down looking through these possibilities. Um, you know, here's a, a frog. It's once again still a chordate. Here's something interesting though. Uh, Rhizopus microsporus is a fungus. And to find this gene in a fungus, which is not within the kingdom animalia at all, might be interesting. It's a nice short base pair piece. So let's try that one. So I'm going to click on it. And it's going to, in this section give me the little um, sequence code um, and the whole reference to that and I don't have to do anything else except go right over to run blast and I can start to make a comparison um, for doing this kind of thing when we're looking at evolutionary relationships it's better to make sure you've clicked the somewhat similar sequences um, and you can leave everything else kind of preset the way it is. We hit blast, and now the servers are actually doing this comparison. Now, being a short um, section of a genome, so many, so few base pairs, it's pretty easy to get a result pretty quick. So here we are. Um, there's a portion of this that a lot of organisms have. Um, so that's the conserved part of this gene that is likely to have been sort of an original segment. Um, you can scroll down and look through all the different alignments, but I find um, the easiest thing to do right away is to go, say, to the distance tree of results. And this will give us the quick phylogeny of this gene sequence. And so when I look through it, um, I find that uh, there's a wide variety if I e expand this so that you can see the key to the taxonomic groups by color over here and these little dots here um, relate to the colors you see on the far right. Um, you'll notice there are all kinds of different animal groups which is great that means this is going to be a useful sequence for our uh, exploration but I also noticed there are members of all kinds of other groups, the kingdom fungi is included. This is a fungus sequence. Um, and, and even some plants, which is really kind of odd, kind of indicating that this is a really early um, sequence. Or, you know, it's either um, from the origin, um, long before animals diverged, um, and a shared common ancestor of all these groups was together, or it's convergently evolved, which is, you know, always a possibility. But the thing that I find very interesting here is Ortospora colligata, which is sort of the outgroup to all these other groups. Um, if you look up Ortospora, you'll find that it is, in fact, a, um, an intracellular parasite. It's a protist that lives inside the cells of um, eukaryotic organisms. 
And that provides us with a clue that there might be some very interesting evolutionary mechanisms at play here. Um, it's possible. Um, we know that genes are inherited, of course, in a uh, horizontal way or in a vertical way, depending upon, you know, it is disease transmission. But it's very unusual that, um, and, and occasionally occurs, that you get a, um, uh, a passing on of genes not by inheritance, but rather by infection. Um, and this horizontal gene transfer as, a, as an evolutionary mechanism is very interesting. It may give us some clues to the origin of at least this particular homeobox sequence. So I would go on, I would use this tree in doing your assignment, um, and then I would look up two other genes and look to see if the topology of these trees are the same or different, if there's something they share. And if they share a common topology, then perhaps um, you've under, under, um, underplayed the entire evolution of animals. That is, you've demonstrated what that pattern might be, and it might be common to all three genes. If they're different, you might be looking at different evolutionary mechanisms generating these different patterns, indicating that animals might have a much more complex evolutionary history. So there you go. That's a brief, quick look at how to use the BLAST tool.